Hey, everybody. Welcome to Behind the Bar. My name is Danny Johnson, your host, where I interview your favorite dry bar comedians. I'm lucky enough today to have the very funny Hoss Ridgeway from Indiana. Hoss, welcome. Hey, good to be here, bro. I got one question for you right off the bat. Do you have any books? Do I have any books? I have a children's book. That's about all I'm qualified to write. Um, I'm looking at your background right now, is that a, is that a uh, green screen or is that a real... That's a real lot. That's my library. Yes. I, I, I used to joke around, tell everybody I'm, I'm not much of a reader, but turns out I am. So <laughs> yeah, I got lots of books. Well, cool, man. I, I, uh, like I mentioned before we started here today, I got referred to you by our, I guess our mutual friend Lee Harden and yeah. uh, had a chance to watch your comedy special on dry bar called uh, the Husky Chronicles. <laughs> That's right. Which I'm I hope you find interesting enough that my dry bar special, we have, we have a lot in common is uh the chusky life c-h-u-s-k-y <laughs> that's awesome which i joke is uh uh when my doctor you know called me obese based on my weight i said i'm really more of a chubby husky hybrid gotcha like a chusky that's, yeah i like that that's a great word so i was so intrigued i was like man I'm, i bet you this guy and i have a lot in common with the husky chronicles because i did the same thing with sears you talk about going uh you know shopping and for those husky jeans it's actually the husky section there's a section right like husky area and, right. Uh, my mom and would it's... yell out in the middle of the mall like i'm over here in the husky section daddy <laughs> yeah that's always lovely he's like yeah. well i'm over here talking to this girl mom so shoddy you know it's yeah, like yeah. that's how it is how did you um I noticed that uh, your dry bar special, like some of the newer ones, is about 25, 26 minutes long. They started right. out being 40 minutes or whatever. Right. But uh, tell the audience a little bit about your background in comedy, how'd you get started, and then your preparation okay. for the special. Because it's ultimately, you know, you don't have a whole lot of say in what gets aired, you know, and, and uh, right. you do a little bit, but, you know, you know, you're being recorded. The pressure's high. Yeah, so I got started in comedy, uh, like in 1997, I did my first like comedy show and it was like a Christmas, um, most people tell you they got, you know, started doing the the open mics and I didn't do any of that. I got called from a chiropractor guy who had like 30 employees and had their spouses and kids and they had a big Christmas dinner and he said, I want you to do comedy. So I did the best I could and wow. I did my first show and then several years later i'm at this conference and uh and it's all like church event planners or whatever and this band was going to be playing and i had made all my friends laugh at the restaurant that night and so i'm just sitting at the head of the table doing chris farley stuff yeah. or whatever and they go uh you're going on stage tonight i was like what are you talking about sonic flood the band is going to be up tonight not hoss ridgeway and the guy that got up he said Hoss Ridgeway comedian is coming up to wow. for 10 minutes. And I'm like, guys, and they said, just do what you did at Ruby Tuesdays. And I was like, you mean eat a lot or, you know, <laughs> and I ended up just doing 10 minutes and been booked ever since. Um, that's, that's so great. That's probably the first time someone introduced you as comedian, right? Yeah, it, absolutely. The very first time. And he had no idea that I had just done a bunch of free shows up to that point, you know, yeah. so and then people started meeting me in the in the hallway and and for the rest of the weekend at that conference. And I started going to like Denver and Washington State and Arizona. And I mean, wow. I just, all of a sudden I'm all over the whole map, which was That's crazy. Fantastic. And uh, for dry bar to get ready, I sat down with my uh, friends up here. Um, there was a comedy club at the time called Gutty's Comedy Club in yeah. Indianapolis. And so it's a clean comedy club. And and the owner and the booker and I are really close friends. And so we just sat down and I was like, tell me which ones you think I should do, you know, because yeah. they've heard everything I've done, you know? And so we came up with a plan and then I planned like four shows leading up to it, only doing the dry bar set. Right. And I just did that set. I wrote it out. I didn't, I've never written out my comedy. I've only rehearsed it. That's how I memorize things by, oh, wow. you know, acting it out. I've not written it down but I decided to write down my script for the dry bar, you know? Yeah. And then I sent it to Johnny Beaner, who's also a dry bar comedian. Okay. Um, I had hired him off of an app and I didn't even know who it was till I started working with him just to be like, Hey, look at my script. Tell me what you think. And uh, he was great. He was, cause he'd already been on dry bar. So that was pretty cool. And then um, I was ready after doing it two or three times, you know, um, that set. So 
Yeah, and then you film uh, you film two shows in one night, right? With uh, correct. Yeah, in Salt Lake. Did you um? Oh, what was I going to ask you? Did you find it? Let me go back a little bit. The when you did that show in front of church event planners, first of all, right. what a perfect audience to do a show in front exactly. of. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Tell me if you've experienced this because I've performed in churches as well. Um, I found it very interesting, and it's different from comedy clubs, corporate events. Um, when you talk, they become quiet. So in other words, if I tell a joke and gets a laugh and I want to throw a tagline, tagline to get that laughter, boom, 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 boom. Once I do this, the tagline, they quiet and then laugh again because yeah. they're trained to speak. Like when the when the leader quote yeah. unquote, is speaking, you be quiet. You got? Do you notice that? I do. It's kind of like you respect me way too much. You know, it's like right. it, it's right. it's uh, and and. Of course, I've always in, I enjoyed the I I did mostly churches for almost twenty years, and then wow. when I moved to Indianapolis, I decided to hone my um, club skills. You know, which means I had to trim the fat, and yeah, you know, so much uh, word economy learning for me. I, I had to. I mean, I opened for Taylor Mason at Harding University in Arkansas. Yep. And he, he backstage, he's like, man, you need to come to New York and open for me. You're funny, but I think you only have two minutes. And yeah. I, like, wow. Dude, I got, I got two hours, bro. You yeah. know, <laughs> and he's like not in the club. And I, and it took a while for me to figure that out. And, um, you know, here I was 20 year veteran and I decided to go to open mics and start working on and uh, bits that I've been telling for 20 years. And, yeah. And open mics can be a humbling experience as you know, we both yeah. know. Yeah. You don't, you don't go there to get laughs. You go there to practice on a mic in front yeah. of people. And as I tell people too, and I don't, I, I do open mics here and there, but I tell them, you know, they're like, Hey, how do, how, how do you want me to bring you up? Do you want me to mention your special or your credits? I'm like, no, 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 Right. Just, you might don't even, you just make up a name. I don't even care. Right. <laughs> Brian will be on stage now. You know, right. Introducing Barbara Johnson. What? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, you know, I get the, my name's Hoss Ridgeway and I just filmed a special by the way called the color of comedy with Dennis Gaxiola, which he's an incredible comedian. And they introduced me on the special. The host who knows me just got words mixed up. And she said, uh, Ross Hidgeway. So <laughs> I was like, well, at least if I do terrible, it, I don't have my name on it. So, you know, I grew up in Long Island, New York, and, um, uh, we called each other Hoss. Oh, okay. That was like a, a like a like boss, but Hoss, and I, I don't know. It just it was like a term of endearment. Like, hey, what's up, Hoss? Yeah, that's kind of how that came along. I mean, my real name is Richard Ridgeway, and it's impossible to say. Can you imagine yeah. asking people to introduce you? Right. <laughs> and so, in '91, in college, I joined a fraternity or social club at the college I went to. Um, but they said you get a new name, and my new yeah. name was Hoss, and it's been that way for 30 years now. So, yeah. You have some, you know, it, sometimes when I watch a special, I, 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 uh, I take different things from it. Right. So mm. you have a couple of lines in there where I think to myself, man, I wish I wrote that. Oh, thank you. You know, and it's so well written and it's such a, 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 it's a short, you know, polished joke. And, and it was the one you did, um, about when your mom says you shouldn't, swim after you 30 minutes after you eat <laughs> right i haven't learned to swim yet yes because there's been... so much there's so many ways to make that joke fatter and not work on the back end right you literally every every word in that joke is necessary none can be removed right and and the truth is is every once in a while i, I tell it wrong and it gets <laughs> nothing like right. if, it, if i trip up the words at all there is no response at all and I wrote that joke in 97. Like it was a part of my very first show wow. ever. Wow. And and then I saw a special where Jim Gaffigan actually tells a version of that story. Oh. You know, the same kind of thing and I'm like, "Man, that's yeah. Jim Gaffigan, but I wrote mine in 97 and my friends would, you know, stand up and go, "He did not steal that. You know, he wrote yeah. that thing." So But yeah, yeah, I think people get especially non-comedians, you know, the general public, regular people I call them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They get, you know, there's a lot of, of similarities in comedy. You know what I mean? Sure. The people are doing marriage jokes and you might have, it's not uncommon to have the same idea. Of course, if I see somebody doing a joke that's way too close to mine, they got it on TV first. I got to get rid of it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. There's a few I let go of too. Yeah. Yeah. The Chusky stuff that I do, I got a comment on my um, 
dry bar, you know, you get a thousand great comments and you get the mm-hmm. one negative one. You're like, eh, sure. I'm terrible. Right. Um, they said uh, Gabriel Iglesias did that 10 years ago, referring to his fluffy. He oh, calls yeah. Himself fluffy instead of fat. And I'm like, well, you know, the origin of my joke is from eighth grade going to the mall with my mom. And she said husky. And I said, I'm chubby. And Right. You know, so it, you'd have to take that into consideration. But uh, I remember writing a joke and seeing it on a. I wrote a joke about what's the Olympic sport where they ski and then shoot something. Oh, yeah. It's uh oh, man, I forget what it is, but it's kind of like. Uh, if you would have asked me, I remembered it. But yeah, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. But, but I did ski it, and I, shoot. I, yeah. I never did it on stage, but I wrote about it. And then I'm watching a Seinfeld special many, many years ago. And he did the, a joke and I was like, I can't even do it. I can't right. do better than that. Yeah. And, and, and that happens. Like I used to, like in the nineties, I did a joke about running into a spider web and then I saw, you know, Brian Regan, Brian Regan do it. I'm like, well, I'll never tell that one again, you yeah. know? Yeah. And because, you know, there's that parallel thought, right? So when, when I come up with something, it's because I saw it. Yeah. Right. And because I experienced it and the, and the other guy had the same thing and had the same experience and right. we do that. And, and you just have to be careful. You know, I've, rewritten something when someone was too close and i just took yeah. it a different way or whatever but you know sometimes I've i'll seen get it. guys that open for me on a consistent basis for a while and then i'll start to see them have similar themes or and i'm like I, you know i get the influence i'm like you gotta, you just gotta right. be careful and i kind of just i don't say anything you know i just kind of don't do those jokes anymore and sometimes it's because the person's maybe the same age and the same similar weight than me so it's like similar experiences in life but sure and i've been watching my show for five years opening for me (laughs) right i i expanded that husky stuff because you remember granimals like where they had the matching outfits at sears you know i started talking about that i want some granimals and she's like no you got to be in the huskies you know and i was like how about at least i get underoos you know (laughs) and (laughs) and, uh she's like well there's four boys so everybody gets underoos so my oldest brother got superman my next brother got batman my little brother got joker and i got the michelin man (laughs) right So, yeah, it's terrible. And and you know what's interesting is when you tell the husky jokes or whatever or the eating jokes. And, of course, I've lost 100 pounds since that dry bar. That's great. I was going to talk about that. Yeah. And But the comments, like some people are like, I'm so sad for him. And I'm like, don't be. I mean, like this this is me conquering all of that. You I know? didn't tip me then. T- you, you know, you can tip during a dry bar. Like, you feel <laughs> exactly. Bad throw a tip that way. Or people are like, oh, he's he's a. Uh, you know, whatever he's one guy said, um, poor guy's eating, eating his way to recover from his par- parents' problems or whatever. I'm just like, dude, psychoanalyzing it. Yeah. So I just wrote because you're not supposed to answer them, but I do. And I wrote down, I said, I've lost 100 pounds. So you lose. Right, <laughs> I'm just right. like, I don't know what to say or how to say it. But I got yeah, I've, I've written back to some negative comments. I think four negative comments total that I've spotted. Right. Out of the hundreds. So you focus on them. One of them was in my show, I talk about I used to weigh 280 pounds. And then someone commented, used to. <laughs> Yikes. I was like, geez. So I wrote back, um, you know, sort of lighthearted, like, hey, I'm down to two, whatever, and working hard and with the muscle emoji. But one woman went on a little rant about my tattoos and how dare you let someone with tattoos on a faith based uh network have a special i know right oh sorry yeah. <laughs> so i you know i kind of went in there and i was i was trying to be professional as possible and i thought i think it's in leviticus um, right and how it's uh you shouldn't mark your body in worship of another god or worship of absolutely others, right so um and she's like well if that's how you interpret it i'm like all right you know what I'm, i just <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not to mention that tattoos were invented 1,600 years after that text was written. Right. By the way, those are all Bible books. I have a master's in that. So, oh, very it's, nice. you know, that's... But yeah, like, what, there's so many assumptions were made by her. What if I was tattooed? What if I believed the way she did, and I was right. tattooed, then saved? What exactly. Am I, what am I supposed yeah. to do? Yeah, I'm a reform. Like, this one came from prison. It says no right. regrets. You know, it's like... <laughs> This one came from me hurting someone for making negative comments on my face. <laughs> What's that teardrop? It's the person I killed after they made negative it's, comments. It's not the teardrop. It's the like. It's the like of the button on like Facebook. Them. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. I had um one of my previous guests. Uh, this this is season two. You're going to be episode four. 
uh, on episode two, I think it was. I had this, a gentleman by the name Cyrus Steele. I don't know if you know him or not. Okay. And he is uh, what I call a multi-talent. And watching your special, you got jokes, you got impressions, you got sound effects. Right. You can sing. It's quite sickening, the amount of talent. <laughs> I'm watching it. I'm like, all I, all I do is tell jokes. And this guy's got the, the all four pillars of the entertainment industry. Yeah, I, I play the guitar as well. All and, right. We're done. Yeah, I know. We're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and uh, I do musical comedy, but I was actually, my when I got the Dry Bar special at Invitation, I was like, I'm going to prove to people that I'm not a one-trick pony. You know, I'm going to do stand-up and I'm going to do my best stuff. Right. And and then, like, if I, if I get a re invitation back, then I'm going to bring the guitar then. You know right. what I mean? And, and between then and now, I signed with... Uh, uh, Willow Creek guitars. So you can go to Willow Creek guitars and their website and m the guitar that I'm, I'm on their website is holding their guitar and stuff. Wow. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, as a matter of fact, I picked a mini guitar. So that just makes it funny, you know, when right, I'm holding right, this right. tiny little guitar. So. so what, and tell me if this is too personal or not. So what no, prompted okay. you to decide to lose weight? Um, well, about, about a year before dry bar i was diagnosed with diabetes and oh, okay. and it was uh you know pretty bad diabetes i had a1c of 13 it's supposed to be 5.6 that's a bit you're, much yeah yeah and your morning blood sugar is supposed to be at 100 or less and i was at 380 so the doctor's like uh you know you're in stroke zone wow so i went on a, a drug called ozempic and uh, i'm not a representative and uh right but it it changed everything. My A1C is 5.1. My morning blood sugar is 89. I'm lost a hundred pounds. I don't even have to have a CPAP anymore. Wow. You know, like I sleep at night. It's uh, yeah, I just had to get healthy. I, I turned 50 in a few months. And so I'm like, okay, this next 30 years, I need to be healthier. Yeah, for sure. You get to that. Uh, when do you, when's your birthday? November 14th. November. Yeah. I'll turn 50 the month before you. And uh, for me, at least mentally, I'm kind of getting to that, you know, it's not a midlife crisis, but you start thinking about, well, 50, I'm probably not going to live to a hundred. Right. So I'm like at halftime here. Exactly. You just got to do something. I mean, of course you were, you sound like maybe around a new year's baby and I'm that's, and I'm a Valentine's day, baby. It's a little frustrating. I right. did the math one day and I'm anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I, I fluctuate my weight all the time, but currently I'm down 20 some odd pounds, but my whole life is just a yo-yo. And I, Sure. Me too. I guess this past year just really I essentially took the pandemic and treated it like my own personal buffet, um, which was bad. So the last 60, 90 days have been fantastic, but. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely, I mean, I've been on Facebook since 07 you know, and so if you go back on all my pictures on Facebook of uh, at least my profile pictures, you can see extremely large to, to you know, I lost um, 80 pounds one time and then I gained it back and then some. So I was over 400. I don't know really how much I weighed because my scale at home didn't go that far. It just said wow. error for a while. Wow. And now I've gotten down to like 299. So, I mean, this is. I mean, I, I tell people hundred pounds, but it's probably 115 or 120. So yeah, that's fantastic, man. Good for you. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm, I was in a 50 waist and now I'm in a 38, 38 or 40 now. Wow. I was, um, and usually on, on stage, I tell people like, you know, I used to weigh and then I cough, <laughs> you know, it's like, and then I lost weight, you know, and they'd never hear the actual numbers, but right. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, when you, I have, I'm looking at my notes here from watching. I watched your uh, Huckabee. How was that experience? You were on the Huckabee show for those. Governor Huckabee has a talk show. Right. Regular guests, music guests, and comedy guests. So uh, you did wonderful on the, your, was that before or after your dry bar? Um, it was, I think it was after. It oh, was wow. after. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was similar. Like it wasn't, but a few months after it was just right in the same amount of time. So um, maybe it was before. It was before. My bad. It was before. Uh, it was a neat experience. I, I go down a couple times a year and do a warm up for the crowd. Oh, okay. You know? And um, which is really cool. I've met some people like Daryl Strawberry and a bunch wow. of like Clint Black and um, uh, let's see, uh, Billy Dean was one of my favorite, uh, get, you know, country artists back in the '90s, and he was on the show and he gave me like, a, I told him I said, dude, I'm I was big big fan since I was in college and 
he said, hey, well, come on in here. I'll show you something. And he picks up his guitar and plays a brand new song hadn't even been recorded yet. Whoa. I got a free concert from Billy Dean. It's amazing. You know, and I, I love being on there. The, the challenge there is I'm not a political guy. Like I'm I'm not Democrat, Republican or anything. I'm just right. I'm just, you know, I have some issues that are important to me and I vote that way. And that's nobody's business, you know. Right. And, uh, but when you get on that show. It's like it's a very political show. And and so some I've had a club owner like when I ask him if I can be in his club and and I said I've been on the Huckabee show he's like unfriend block you know wow. it's like wow I'm like I didn't I didn't even say and anything you know and I and you can watch every video every post I stay away from that stuff and um and you know I'm like you do you and I'm gonna do me you know that's how it is I don't even get religious even though I you know um, I'm also a pastor but when I do comedy I'm just a clean comedian you know. Right. I don't do Bible jokes or make anybody feel uncomfortable. I'm just, I don't even know how to cuss. I told you that earlier. I'm like, yeah. don't even know how to do that. So it's never been a part of my life and I don't need it, you know, but yeah, I don't judge somebody else. You know, I've had people open or go before me and after me that were dirty and I'm in the middle, which is the yeah. hardest place to be clean, by the way. And I just did me and had a great time and nobody was like, I can't believe you didn't, you know, so yeah. But the experience was kind of cool. Um, it was, I was asked to be on it from Mike Huckabee. He saw me warm up one day and he he saw me in the hallway and he said, I need you on the show. And I was like, I wow. like how you, I like how you think, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> he actually invited me on a cruise for, uh, that he does to do comedy on the cruise. And, and unfortunately I had, uh, something planned, uh, in the Dominican Republic that week, um, you know, it was a mission trip doing uh, prosthetic limbs for right. people down there. And so it was like, I couldn't do it, but in the future I'll be, I'll be on one of his cruises too. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, I've sent my stuff to the Huckabee Booker. Why don't, why don't you throw in a good word for me? Austin? I will, man. I will. <laughs> um, yeah, I found um, it, it benefits me now. And this is a change as of the last year or so. Um, when I headline a room, I'll have some openers, maybe one or two, and I'll tell them, obviously they have to be clean, but I'll tell them, don't mention it's a clean show. Right. And then even if you slip up, you, you accidentally curse or you do, don't even mention, just keep going. Right. Don't say, oh, sorry, it's a clean show. Cause I find it's telling the, the audience is like, oh, the clean's bad. You know, so I go just roll with it and don't mention it. And I, I, I go, I promise you at the end of the night, the audience will not even remember that you did or didn't curse. Right. I, I did uh crackers comedy club here in Indianapolis. Yeah. 40 some year old comedy club has a picture of everybody you've ever heard of on the yeah. wall. And so I headlined uh, about a month ago. And what I thought was cool is I've never told the guys before me not to be, you know, to, I mean, I've never told them what they had to, had to do right. or did not have to do. But the guys respected me knowing, you know, my background and my dry bar and all that kind of stuff. They said, hey, how clean do you want me to be? I said, I would appreciate certain words not being said, but I'm not going to judge you, you know. Sure. And they they did great. They um, I mean, they had some edgy stuff that wasn't. But see, sometimes the people who come to hear me are expecting only clean. Right. You know, I and and that's the only reason I was like, OK, but but seriously, I, I go and just be myself. Uh, wherever I'm at yeah you know yeah I had to be intimidating meeting Governor Huckabee I mean yeah the first time I was like wow this is, is he taller you know, or short? how tall are you I'm six four he's a lot shorter than I am okay. So, okay um yeah and and I took my dad the first time and my dad went backstage with me and, yeah. and it was kind of funny because when I went to the dressing room um Daryl Strawberry came into the green room where my dad was sitting and my dad doesn't know a stranger. So he's just talking to Daryl Strawberry, you know? Wow. I walk in out of the dressing room and after makeup and he says, my dad says, um, Daryl, I'd like for you to meet my son, Haas. And I was like, dad, that's not how this was supposed to go. <laughs> you know, this is, I'm the one supposed to go, dad, I'd like you to meet Daryl Strawberry, you know? Yeah. And Daryl's a great dude. I, I said, hey, I chewed a lot of bubble gum trying to get your rookie card when I was a kid. Yeah, and absolutely. he said- really and he said well hold on and he reaches into his pocket bro hands me another piece of bubble gum <laughs> it, was, it was the best moment it was awesome 
Yeah, I thought he was going to give me a rookie card. I'm yeah, like, like he carries around a yeah. stack of graded rookie cards. You see? Exactly. Here's a, I don't know if you PSA know about, 10, yeah. Yeah, you know about card grading? I'm oh, dude, I'm, I'm, there's probably 20,000 cards in this room right now. So, yeah, yeah I, I'm into I, them all. Uh, do, I, I used to do other grading companies, but I'm strictly PSA now. And I'll flip yeah. some, a lot for my collection. I mostly collect, see, uh, Trout, Mahomes, Tatis, Judge, okay. Brady, and now Trevor Lawrence. I'm in the Jacksonville area. Oh, so. the T Law in the house, right? Yeah. Oh, he's the he's in dude. His cards have been going crazy lately. Yeah. I've I collect uh the only pers- personal collection I have is like my Steelers and Pirates and those kind of things. I I but I flip a lot. You know what I mean? I just yeah. buy and grade and sell. You know, yep. that's what I do. It's and the worst Pokemon. when you get it back and it's not what the grade you wanted it to be. <laughs> Tell me about it. One time I sent in uh I think 30 Jordan cards. Yeah. And accidentally got one in that I would never have sent. It was so off centered, and it was like a yeah. base card. It was worthless and, and not even fifty cents worth, you know. And it got in the stack that the because I take it to a dealer and he sends it off. He yeah, prepares them and yeah. And it came back and I'm like, it's a six, bro. So it's like worse. It's 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 like I you I would have to give you money to take it. That's right. how bad this one is. Right. And I was like. Ugh. I guess that's personal collection from now on you know yeah my neighbor next door we typically send them in together and and uh, he ac- accidentally sent one in that we didn't look at enough and it was there was a huge crease on the back and it came back a five we were like how is this a five it was fresh right. out of the pack and exactly. then we kind of look in the light like it was like a cracked ice card or something whatever oh like, yeah refractor yeah so. matter of fact my my card that i hand out at the show is a uh, mimicked of uh of the 87 tops baseball so yeah and it's got a picture of me on it because I tell a baseball joke. You you remember when I was like, you know, I was terrible at baseball, but I loved yeah. it, you know. So yeah, you're in two different leagues uh, on the bench for both. <laughs> That's right. My prize, my prize card, not my most valuable, but is the uh, it's a 17 2017 Judge 87 throwback rookie card. Nice. That's a great card. Yeah, and it's nice and shiny, but it still has that wood trim. Yeah, you know, from the 87 collection and. Um, my my favorite card um is is a second year Kobe Bryant card and okay. it's it's tops chrome apparitions and it's just like got really cool colors on it and he's like flying through the air kind of thing and it's a PSA 10 and I found it in a top loader in somebody's you know upstairs where there was no yeah uh, air conditioning or anything so I'm like it was crazy that it got a 10 it's just crazy yeah so, yeah I rescued that one. I was, you know, I had to buy, you know, 12,000 cards that were in top loaders to get the cards that I wanted, but I got yeah. them all. So. My son and I have a good time at the kitchen table with our, they have like a little light and magnifying glass trying to get those, see if the corners are worth sending in to PSA and all that. Sure. Stuff. Sure. Yeah. I, um, I, I would imagine that the pressure of Huckabee, I know they do edits when needed, but it was probably more than dry bar because dry bar is, you know, I guess Huckabee's almost immediately aired, if not aired that yeah. night. So you don't, there's not a lot of time. No. And, and, you know, and the, the amount of time you get is like, like warm up is five minutes or six minutes. Um, yeah. No, warm up, warm up is seven minutes, but being on the air is five. And like you, you want to do a setup, a punch, and a callback all in yeah. five minutes. It's ridiculous. You, is there a clock for you on stage? Yes. It, you see, um, when you're looking into the camera right below it is a clock and it's just going down the whole yeah. time. So, yeah. And then when you, you see it get to about 10 seconds, you better finish good. Cause the music will start and Huckleby will leave his desk and come over and see you, you know? I, <laughs> yeah. I always, I always hope that when I'm watching these comics on Huckabee that the band likes you because they that's they're in the shop Boom. almost the whole time. Yes, yes. And they did. They liked you a lot, but they're literally you're little it's like telling the people watching, like, I guess I guess he's funny because this guy they're laughing back there. It's like I hope the band likes the person. Yeah. And it's it's so difficult. They the uh not to be critical, that they're the audio of the the crowd is not as good as other shows, you know what I mean? So they don't they don't always hear the laughter you know i, I sent somebody the, the uh, clip one time and they're like oh man you were killing it why weren't they laughing i was like trust me that place was rolling yeah so. that's interesting yeah and you're playing i mean you have to i've heard from people that do done, done shows like that you don't make the mistake of playing to the camera you play to the live audience to get yeah 
you know, make sure you got the timing and the rhythm and the jokes come out, you know. Yeah, I definitely, I got to make eye contact with the people. Um, you know, if you've probably done corporate and yeah. banquets and things like that, where you can't necessarily hear the laughter, you have to see it, Yeah, you know, and trust that it's happening. Cause there'd be rooms with, you know, hundred foot ceilings. It feels like, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but you know, yeah, probably know. more like 25 or 30 foot ceiling and people are spread out like in this giant room and when you tell punch that normally in a club just fills the room yeah you hear laughter but you see their faces yeah and you have to be like i'm trusting my joke you know yeah it's corporate tough. corporate and private stuff or something something that someone's throwing together is almost a hundred percent set up for it to be unsuccessful <laughs> yeah you know i mean they're like yeah we're gonna have the tables is gonna be far apart the ceiling like you said is a hundred feet yeah um we're gonna have the buffet right in front of you there are people <laughs> gonna be getting yeah i tell people like i'm like look i need i need a microphone and an attentive audience that's the only two things i need right i need tunnel vision closed in and go well the last two corporate gigs were like christmas parties and they were like trucking companies and yeah. so it was like one was a pallet company and one was a trucking company and they were going to give away the Christmas bonus and the, the door prizes after the comedy. So they were like, let's wrap it up. Husky. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. You know, like we're, we got a big screen TV to win, which is interesting. Cause I had the winning ticket for the big screen TV <laughs> and I slid it to the guy next to me on the table. Cause I'm like, I ain't going out like that. No, you know? no, 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 no. Those, those rough and tough, you know, truck drivers and meet me out in there in the parking lot going boy you ain't supposed to get that tv you know <laughs> so i was just like you win bro you know yeah, you win. Right. um so are you so you collect cars you, what you're a sports fan i imagine yes absolutely yeah what who are your teams and what sports do you follow i i follow football and baseball um so i'm a pirates and steelers fan i grew up all over the country but my third grade through sixth grade was right outside of pittsburgh and all my friends loved it and the yeah. rest of my family are braves and and uh, cowboys fans and so i was just basically picking whoever the opposite of my oldest brother was you know because right. the sibling rivalry had to be strong yes. you know and so uh so since the early 80s late 70s i've loved both those teams yeah, Steelers, both of those teams are fun to root for, no matter who you are, I think. I mean, Steelers yeah. are always good. They've had, what, three head coaches in... In my lifetime. Yeah. Um, and the Pirates, to me, is... Uh, I just love rooting for whoever can do well without an exuberant uh, salary. Right. Yeah, they. I remember one year, Alex Rodriguez made more the entire team of Pittsburgh. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm talking. I like what you know. I think it was back in the day. You had Bonilla, Andy Van Slyke, Sid Bream, Barry Bonds, yep. Doug Drabeck. Yep. Um, that's fun to me, and I like the old school uh, Dave. Well, Dave Parker, those old school pirate hats that are sort of like oh a, yeah, with the line around it. You know, what I mean? pillbox hat. Those were cool. I what are they I called? had one pillbox hat. Is what they called them. <laughs> I gotta I gotta get one of those. Yeah, I had one for a while, and and I I guess I left it somewhere. But yeah, I've worn it to the PNC Park before. I mean, like, I'm, this is what I'm gonna wear when I go. Yeah. So, but I mean, like, I'm I'm a fan right now of like players as well. So yeah. I, any any Dominican player I kind of follow just because I I've been to the Dominican Republic 26 times, and the people there just are some of the best yeah. people I know on the planet. Do you and watch so, the World Baseball Classic? I assume. I tried to watch some of that. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, fun. It is. It really is. I, I uh, the cool thing was ha seeing Ken Griffey Jr. get in the batting cage during that, you know, because yeah. he was working with uh, the USA team, right? Yeah, is that oh, what yeah. you're talking about? Yeah, he was the hitting coach, right? Yeah, yeah. And so he gets in the batter's box and crushes it, and he's like, "Still got it," and he walked. Yeah, out. first one, first and only one. He just hit one and and he walked off. Yeah, it's just like he's done. So, yeah, I'm a fan. Like I. I'm, I've been reading a lot of interesting stats about the players that I, you know, didn't probably appreciate when I was younger, like Greg Maddox and Tony Gwynn. And um, my favorite, I've told this before on the podcast to um, uh, this other dry bar comic named Kermit Appio. He's from Seattle. Um, my favorite quote is from Greg Maddox when in an interview, someone asked him who the easiest player was to pitch to. And he said, uh, Barry Bonds, hands down, easiest player to pitch to and they go why barry bonds he goes uh, you walk him <laughs> right he's like there's no right. other you just walk him dude yeah i know i i saw him 
play at Three River Stadium in 1994, and wow. when he was still with the Pirates, and um, that was incredible. Just to you know, say I saw him and I saw, but I saw that team, the the Killer Bees, you know, yeah, and and that was that was that was neat. Um, but yeah, I've been a, a sports fan. I mean, basketball, I I always liked the Bulls, but you know, back in the 90s because yeah. I was you know Jordan guy, but. Um, I'm, I also follow players for that, you know, yeah. um, it is so fun to watch the LaMelo ball play foot basketball. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's like art in motion. You know, it's like, it's just crazy. So I like to watch those guys play. I, I got a, uh, what's his name? Ken Pickens. Oh, Kenny Pickens. Yeah. I got a, a rookie card of his going into PSA soon to sell. Oh, Kenny, so maybe Kenny I'll give Pickett. it to you. Yeah, Kenny Pickett. Yeah, no. Pickett, George, not Pickens. Yeah. yeah, George Pickens and Kenny Pickett. I so, know, I yeah, I sent I sent one to PSA. It's a triple patch auto to thirty five of Kenny. Wow. Pickett. Yeah. What does that my, come out of? Like an Inception box or something? What's it did. It, it did. Yeah. And my friend um pulled it, and he he called me immediately. He said, "I pulled your card." You know, yeah. so I, I I traded a bunch of Pokemon for it, and yeah, felt really good about that. So I um, it's. <laughs> It's funny to talk about cards. I get one of my friends makes fun of me and my buddies and my for, you know, being grown men uh, collecting cards. He goes like this. He goes, are you guys still collecting pictures of men? (laughs) Right, right, right. (laughs) Yeah. And it's so funny, the the amount of uh, attitude that people get at the grocery store over cardboard pictures of dudes right 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 right. they're getting like i mean i had to stand in between two people and be a peacemaker one night you know right so well you know i started out this podcast you know right fun a little bit about your library back there but you do have a book called seba the worm it's a kid's book children's book i did it's called seba and the worm okay and tell us about just, what, what uh what was the inspiration behind you know writing a children's book I read this quote from India and it was that the Robin trades its feathers for worms and ends up flightless. And that's the whole parable. Oh, wow. So I took that parable and I wrote an entire story about, I added a snake and I added, you know, that the snake was trying to trade one feather for one worm every day. And, and it's really my whole story in, in the sense that when I was growing up, I was trying to become somebody I wasn't all the time to fit in. And I was basically giving myself away and I didn't even know who I was after a while. Right. And, and then it took someone coming into my life and like my wife and who encourages me and that kind of stuff to be, to see who I really am, you know? And, you know, when you're, when you're like, when you're an artist uh, of any kind, and you're ADHD, you know, some people don't understand you, you know, they're like, I don't, I didn't see the work, you know, like you get to a math problem. You're like, I didn't see the work that you did. And I'm like, well, the answer is correct. Isn't it? You know, (laughs) the results are good. And, you know, so uh, being misunderstood for a long, long time, it's really cool to, um, to just write about that and say, you know, here's this little bird that trades its feathers for worms until it can't fly. And then it gets saved by a little girl on a bike. And then, the little girl teaches him to fly again and he, he doesn't fall for the snakes, uh, right. you know, schemes anymore. So that's the the book. Good. Good for you, man. See C- Seba and the worm. I mean, you can get that on your site, right? Yeah. It's, I, I have to reprint it again. Cause after the Huckabee show, I sold so many of them that I, you know, kind of ran out, but that's great. Yeah, it is great. And, um, so I do need to get, get more, but, you know, I wonder, have you thought about putting it on uh, Kindle, KDP, Amazon KDP? Like Amazon? Yeah, no, like not just for the hardcover, but you can upload the PD, you know, for it to be a print on demand or um, a digital version. Yeah, I need to figure that out. You know, as, uh, you know, as those of us that are 50, we're kind of like technology. Oh, yeah, I have no idea. Like, <laughs> I, I, I pray it. every guest that I have on this podcast, I pray that I don't have to edit anything because this episode will never come out. If I have to. <laughs> right. Right. I, and my connection, I'm in the best connection I could find. And every once in a while we go, you know, so it's just how it is. Right. <laughs> it is how it is. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I like writing. I have a few more books that just haven't been illustrated yet. Um, there's ones about um, a little um, caterpillar that doesn't want to go in the cocoon you know, doesn't want to go do the hard things, but everybody's trying to convince them. If you'll just go, you'll learn how to fly, you know? And so 
he said, but I'm gonna be alone and dark. And it's like, you're not alone. You're becoming yeah. who you're supposed to be. You know, everything I I'm writing is about encouraging kids to, to truly be, you know, who they are, not yeah, what everybody else message. wants, not what everybody else wants them to be. So. I noticed the other thing that intrigued me about your site and it's hossridgeway.com by the way. Right. Um, not only do you have, you can buy a DVD, but a multitude of t-shirts with yeah, some pretty yeah. funny, pretty cool, funny sayings. Yeah, Again, I do. stuff I wish I had thought yeah. of. Yeah, I've got a lot of t-shirts, like uh, free Christian side hugs, you know. That's and, hilarious. Well, I was at a, a conference and everybody was buying these shirts in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I was doing comedy and nobody was buying my shirt, but everybody walked in off the street with one that said free hugs. And I was like, I know what I'm making for next year, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, just different things that came from my show, like ch chip clips are for quitters. Right. <laughs> you know? And uh, the newest one is uh, a station wagon, and it's uh, the brand is uh, Notachi. Notachi. Yeah, that's my dad's car. You know, Notachi the radio, no Notachi the you know front seat, you know Notachi right. the steering wheel, Notachi the window because then you get your fingerprints on. It, you know, so I was like, he's driving a Notachi. You know, so that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, that's the kind of things. It's it's actually a new bit we're working on, and it was just funny how you sit around with guys writing and something comes out, you know? Yeah. It's great that these t-shirts are like, um, they could be bits and they could be solo. So in other words, right. I don't think you have, you don't have to continue to do those jokes to sell that shirt. It's funny on its no. own. And that's, that's the goal. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the, the little nuances in the free Christian side hugs, like there's a dog and a cat, you know, because I have the dog and a cat bit, you know, yeah. and and it's a shout out to <laughs> the Ghostbusters where he's like dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria, you know, right, so right, 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 it's right. just my whole life, you know, just trickles into everything that I do as as it should, you know, and I'm an 80s kid and, you know, everything 80s just hits me. So. Heck yeah. Oh, man, I got to recommend you for uh, I don't know if you're into doing podcasts, but yeah, Um a friend of mine uh, near Atlanta does a podcast called eighties flick flashback. So you watch oh, it, you both, well, on your own time, you watch an eighties movie and then you okay. both discuss it Yeah, on the podcast. So like you, and he has a bunch of historical facts and it did, you know, is about the movie. So he keeps wow. the conversation going, but I think I did above the law with Steven Seagal. And was I a guest twice? I can't remember. Um, maybe one of the karate was one of the karate were the karate kids in the eighties. Yes. Yeah, maybe do one of those, but it's so much fun to kind of not only watch that movie again from your right. childhood, but then to, to hear all these different facts. But if you're interested, I'll connect the two of you. Please, uh, please do. I'd I'd love to be a part of that because I mean, I'm a person that notices the little things in a movie, you mm -hmm. know, and I hold on to them, and it's just weird. But I mean, like I, my whole my brain is full of movie quotes, and everybody's tired of them. But, yeah. yeah. Oh, I did Three Amigos. That's yeah. That's oh, dude. Did. Yeah. <laughs> One of the greatest. I, I just my favorite line in that movie is when the girl says to Chevy Chase, "Yeah, you can kiss me on the veranda," and he's like, "The lips will be fine." You yeah. know, it's, like, it's, just, it's the little things that just get me. Like, uh, what would you say one of your favorite movies? I know you're the podcast guy, but I'm just sure. which one of your favorite movies? Oh, uh, one of my uh, Tommy Boy is a favorite. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm a big fan of the old Airplane and Naked Gun movies. Um, okay for the stupid you know um you know what's uh something some what do they say we're taking her to the hospital the hospital what is it it's a big building where they keep sick people but that's not important right now yeah um what else uh a lot of baseball movies but definitely the saturday night live era was farley for me was that oh dude he was amazing and of course tommy boy is definitely one of my favorite movies and and i mean i I've done impressions of him for years. And then, then on top of that, um, my, I guess my favorite movie of all time, if you're going to stack all categories, it would be count of Monte Cristo, you know, okay. but if, if I'm like not intellectual and you don't, I don't have to answer anybody intellectually, then it's uh, galaxy quest all day. I don't even know that one. I'm embarrassed to say, okay. It's Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, Alec Rick Rickman, the guy from monk. I mean, it is stellar cast it is uh um galaxy it's quest i'm gonna have to do watch that you will you will email me or message me saying thank you because it <laughs> it's the three amigos in space bro 
Okay. I, I remember seeing it. I could see Tim Allen in a futuristic uniform for some reason. So I must have seen a commercial for it or something. Dude, it was so underrated. Like nobody went to see it because something else, I forgot, some other Disney movie came out that year. I think it was, it was just a big blockbuster and it, this one got buried. And so there's even a documentary on the Galaxy Quest movie now. So it, it's just oh. amazing. It's like everything you want in a movie. I'm going to have to watch it now. Yeah. All right. So, um, hossridgeway.com, your yes. dry bar special is the Husky Chronicles. People need to watch it, share it, like it, save it, play it on all Please. their devices over on a loop. Yes. Put it on repeat so I can uh, pay off my student loans. That would be awesome. <laughs> and maybe I need to sell these books. I don't know. So. That's right. Right. Don't sell the cards. Right. No. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I hope our paths cross in the future and I'm gonna, you know, I'll, I'll connect you with that uh, other podcast guy, but be great. Uh, hopefully we do a show together and, and uh, if you want to hang out here for a few minutes, we'll sure. Absolutely. You've been listening to behind the bar with Danny Johnson, Hoss Ridgeway. That is it. Have a good one.